All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, it's the 23rd of December right now. And tomorrow is a great day for everyone. And I hope you can enjoy your holidays. I hope you have holidays. I hope that you are able to be with your family, friends, or the people that you all love otherwise. And I hope there will be no drama but just pure joy, hot chocolate and a good bottle of wine and the ability, or not the ability, I hope the ability too, but the possibility to roll some dice with your loved ones. Um, I'm very happy to be able to record this video in order to showcase you the current state of the, well, the whole module family that I'm developing and maintaining that is bringing the and beyond closer to Foundry VTT, two products I absolutely love to use in my sessions as a DM and as a player. So let's provide a quick overview about the tools I will be talking today. Uh, this will be one, the one hand tokenizer, this will be iconizer and this will be D&D Beyond. Tokenizer enables you to quickly create tokens using a layered approach. This can be very sophisticated, like in this example. This can be very simple, like in this example we'll be using uh, live in-game later on. We will be using Iconizer, which provides a vast amount of connecting item names to suitable icons based on an icon set that you can freely download. Um, so this 1800 items and growing um, selected, hand selected by me, insane person to you. Um, and the one thing that you will be always uh, curious about is the, the VTTA D&D Beyond, it was called Bridge. I, uh, I've i got the bad habit of renaming my products because I think of a better name. So, but right now I'm staying with VTTA d, &D Beyond because it's really a total package. And what we had in the 1.0.2 release was a working character import, which we'll be showing in a jiffy. Uh, there wasn't really much improvement, some bug fixes regarding spell slots when multiclassing different spellcasters. Thank you very much for pointing that out. It was a nice member of my Discord community and of the Foundry community. Thanks again. I'm very much appreciative of like pointers regarding D&D spell and other mechanics because I'm a way better programmer than I'm a DM. So if you happen to come across of some misbehaving things, that are not according to the D&D uh, rule set, please point me to it. I very much appreciate everything that you can deliver. So, uh, but what we have now, and this is a patron only release um, right now, um, is the ability to import monsters, to import spells, and so one, one thing that I will disclose in this video. So um, please stay tuned. With these three packages, which are tightly integrated and working well with each other, I, I suggest you just install all three and you're good to go. Now let's go into this beautiful battle map. It's um, made by these two folks, Kshe and Peku. I'm Patreon of theirs and I really love what they are doing. They are sparking my imagination with every release and therefore I'm really glad to showcase the latest installment, a royal, what is it? It's called Royal Throne Room. Yes, that well, I could have, the, the throne was a slight hint. So we got the throne room here, but we, what we're missing is the characters. So let's dig right into our campaign, we've got the Lost Mine of Fandalva, and for some weird reasons, they are appearing in a throne room. Let's take these three guys, these four guys. Uh, it's Azaki, a uh, wood elf range rogue. It's Finn Troyblood, a uh, wood elf druid. It's Rodobro, Valdishkmadal, a male dragonborn fighter, and it's Ruthlock, the Heilige, the Holy One, a human paladin of level four. And what we need to do to bring these guys into the game, we will be creating some 
actors templates placeholders and we will be overriding this plain default data with the correct data we will be pulling directly from the end beyond and you will see it's basically the same sheet but you will notice this the end beyond button over there and this is it's plain white what's that's weird let's click it and you will see this import dialog you've got two inputs a url and an input field for json data json is just a structured data format in text file so let's go let's copy this url for azaki let's paste it in here you see it's check mark so it's a valid url and the button is red now so we unlocked these two shortcuts shift left click open the correct sheet in the new window thanks for radical for providing me with code to, to integrate dbb popper into this module um alt left click opens the json json i've read json over here so that should be related let's create shift uh, alt left click this is json we copy everything like Control a con select everything Control c for copy everything then we head over here and Control v for face everything i i don't know paste everything Control p was what was <laughs> Control p would be printing what well, we won't print so this is azaki well we can see the image um, over here is is transported into the game his current health is is wrong well yeah it's wrong let's see why that happened so it's a bug report for myself armor class feed uh, speed his hit die his ability his saving throw proficiency his skills and proficiency his senses his size, his language, is everything he can handle, like armor and um, weapon-wise. And we've got it more detailed here, not only simple and martial, but his longsword, longbow. So this is all here. We've got an inventory over here, his equipment, his loot, his his weaponry, he's quite a weapon because he's a soldier, baby. So you got his features, his ranger and rogue, his hit points, his fighting style, everything is there. His spellbook is rather, yes, not so populated because of his class selection. Let's look at other ones. Let's go, for example, to Rithlock. Let's take that one too. And Mr. SFSDF will be now Rithlock. And let's wait for loading. Let's insert it here. And we can see, let's close that window. We can see that in contrast to Azaki, uh, who has no special resources, here we got Lay on Hand, Divine Sense, and Channel Divinity. Even while Rothlock isn't acting only all the time as the holy guardian of his chosen deity. Uh, he still has a divine sense and he can lay on hands if people agree so this is happening this is working um, let's go to board two let's do it other if you append slash json at the url you will have the same exact window you can wait until the load is finished you completely select everything copy and paste it over here and you will see that he has the features of a fighter only and he has some priority die action search and second wind so finn sorry you i won't import you let's create tokens real quick you can see the tokenizer in action uh, i've set a default frame so everything is real quick and i can drag those onto the stage here they are and you can see that azaki and let's reset the fuck of war real quick azaki as a night elf has a way better um, sense dark vision sense than ridlock the human so if we mark ridlock i granted him like five feet so we can see where he is when he looks down at his feet i guess perhaps he's as glowing 
boots. But Azaki has way more. He's 60 feet of dark with no directions. So this is adjusted automatically for you and your players. You've got nothing to worry about. Just import your character and play your game. Now this is the player part. So it's really easy for them to come into your foundry game and to be involved in your in your fantasy world. Now let's look at the giant throne which is currently empty and let's change that. So let's close all these tabs uh, and let's go into the D&D Beyond monster searching thing. Let's go into the urban environment and see what we have here. And lo and behold, um, there is an ancient silver dragon, which is a suitable mass for this enormous throne. So let's open it in a new tab. Let's try to see if we've got an archmage. An archmage is good. It's a spellcaster because I want so. So I want to show you some spell thingies I've added into this version. <coughs> oh, sorry. What is RV? This is Spellcaster 2. Let's take RV2. Okay. Ancient Silver Dragon. First things first. Please note this little logo over here next to the Game Master. It says this is the VTD Assets uh, logo. And therefore you can know that this Foundry instance is connected to this whole ecosystem of tools. So, and we can... No, I don't want to show you that. That's for the end of the session. So, um... Foundry is okay. You see that icon, you know it's okay. Um, then the ancient silver dragon. You see some additional tags and labels right beneath the name ancient silver dragon. You can see this one. The first one it says is it's green. That's a good sign. Green is good. Um, yellow is okay. Red is oh oh. So green is good. I'm game master and I'm a GM. So that's very good. Now uh, we can see Compendium. We've got a monster compendium. It's called Monsters. I'm really great at naming things. And it's yellow. That means Ancient Silver Dragon is currently not within this compendium. We can see Import to Compendium instead of Update. So that's the second hint. We've in the scene the Royal Room. And it's yellow again, so this ancient dragon is not yet sitting on his throne. And we are in the world's death, have I mentioned that I'm great at naming things. So it's this silver dragon is neither in the compendium, nor on the scene, nor on the world death. Let's change that. So, um, a short break, I need to check the settings without telling you anything. I'll be right back. All right, here we are again. So I just reset an option, uh, and you can see that uh, Beyond 20 is installed and active. Um, you can see all these great icon uh, buttons to be able to roll into Foundry and Roll 20 by Kagroda. And um, so this, I just wanted to show you that all those buttons, all the data is still passing correctly. So. We wanted to import that silver dragon into our world, so let's do exactly that. So we go over the here, add to world, and we go to Foundry, and we see it is it has created under the actors and Dina Beyond import and monster, and there's this ancient silver dragon. It's exactly the same. Create a token real quick, and we are set. And when clicking on it. You can see health, armor class, speed, ability, skills, everything the same that you can see when importing characters mainly. You can see the features, you can see Iconizer doing its jobs, creating icons for all these things. Um, I gotta admit, I selected the Silver Dragon because I added those um, manually just in before recording this video. Uh, we've got no spells because it's a dragon wash. Why should this magic beast be able to cast spells? That's insane. We've got the biography and all these links are directing to the interview for you to enjoy. All right, um, now we've got that. Let's look at spellcasters um, because that's a little bit different. You can see here.
here again we are connected it's a monster compendium but it's not there yet it's not on the scene it's not on the board and we've got one missing spell you can see it's fireball over here i don't want most over it because i want you to be surprised it's the only one that has this red x right next to its name and it's not in this like mage hand is in capital m capital h like what you would assume i don't know why the film is that lazy in that regard but for demonstration purposes it's great because this is all lowercase fireball and that's why because it's not in the spell compendium because what i'm doing here is uh, what was it again I'm, no arc mage <clears throat> fireball fireball but not fireball okay so it's not in the compendium because what i do is uh, when you open the page and this character is passed it says hey foundry i've got a spell cast so here's a list of spells please look them up for me will you and foundry says all right i've got no i don't know what fireball uh, I've got this guy's self invisibility, light mage, and prestidigitation, shocking grass, detect, and so on. I know all these spells, but fireball is totally unknown for me. And what we could do now is like duplicate. We can go to firebolt. We can go to the spells thingy. And here we go import a compendium at world 2. Let's import the compendium. So we've got fireball now here. And if you re reload the Archmage, Firebolt is there now. No missing spells. Exactly what we wanted. But let's assume we do not want to uh, We delete it from the compendium. We read out the Archmage. So Firebolt is missing. We mouse over it. We wait for a couple of seconds. And Firebolt is then not marked as missing. We can see that this label disappeared. We can see that fireball is in the compendium and we can import the monster like add world isn't that great so fireball here it is um, you can just mouse over every spell that's not currently in the compendium then the tooltip is passed the data is sent to foundry foundry imports the item foundry reports back to dmd and beyond says thumbs up i know it now and this is updated you can import that actor this is an insane quality of life improvement because in the previous versions you you would have been going through this you you go to spells all then you open all those spells and then you click import a compendium you click import a compendium and and so on you can do that still but it's not needed because you are planning a session you look at monsters in dini beyond you see spells are missing you import those spells that are missing if you are in the situation that your players do something that you did not see coming which happens all the time you can look at monsters in jiffy you can add those spells that are missing you are up and running within i would say seconds half a minute tops and then you've got a monster in your world with current with artwork that represent that monster with all the spells abilities and everything now these two worlds like dini beyond and foundry they came extremely close so we've got character import we got spell import we got monster import one thing I haven't looked at is item import. I don't know if that's really necessary, but I'm not sure yet. I haven't looked at all at it um, because those three columns are really something that I wanted to imp Im implement first. Uh, so these most of the spell imports is insanely good uh, and I love it. Um, but now let's try to bring those two worlds a little bit closer together. That's the one more thing that I was talking about. And this is um, currently in development, but it's in a state that I can present something to you. And now we go into the options. And by clicking this little VTD assets button over here, you can see, um, first and foremost, the active connections, like what kind of tabs do we have open the red one 
ones are the Mibion tabs. The other ones are from view tabs. You can see some what is my own actor. This will come to play later. Um, what are the monster tabs, spell tabs? I can click on that and go to there. Um, click on that and go to there. And now this this really great thing. And, uh, yes, you can insert role buttons to monster pages now. So basically what we're doing is replicating beyond 20 functionality here, but differently. So I inserted that, um, save the options, and when we go now to the ancient silver dragon and reload the page, you will see that all these beyond 20 buttons are disappearing and will be replaced by my own buttons. Um, this is because well, beyond 20 works a little bit different than what, what I would love to have. And since I've already passed everything, uh, I thought, well, then I can do it on my own. Um, the difference between beyond 20 and this implementation is just the way it works internally. What Beyond 20 does, and it does really great, I love you, Kakuroto. Um, it, if you click a button, it pauses the formula, it executes the formula, it rolls, and it sends the result to Foundry and Roll20. Um, this is absolutely legit. What Foundry does is, it takes that, it displays the result to the user, and that's basically what everyone needs, really needs. What I missed is when I wrote a streaming add-on, um, which removed everything from the whole UI, and it waited for roles, and if a role appeared, it displayed it very prominently in the top, top right um, edge of the screen. Um, and I was wondering why I would catch all the monster roles, but none of my players, because all my players use Beyond 20. And these role events just never appeared. There was a chat message. I could have waited for a chat message to appear and pass the chat message. It was not really great. So what I'm doing differently, and I don't know if it's better, but it's different, is I assume that you've got an actor in the world that is called Ancient Silver Dragon. And indeed, it is. It is. This one is green. So we, what we do is we send, and let's put it over to the left, and the foundry page to the right. So now we want to roll some buttons for this ancient silver dragon. For example, we want to make a dex ability check. And what we do is we are not calculating, okay, his dex is 10. Uh, so we roll a d20 plus 0 and we send the result to Foundry. No, we say, hi, I'm the ancient sort of dragon. I need to make a dexterity ability check. Would you please do me the favor? And then uh, Foundry says, okay, I've got an actor. He has a dex value of 10. He executes the roll. And it is like it would be... So, now this ability test normal these two things are exactly the same like doing it in the ui and doing it from here it's exactly the same and it is exactly the same like i don't know why this is working normally you could you could like shift click all this stuff and it shortcut it to an, 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 with disadvantage and a shift click would be a regular role control click would be at disadvantage and alt would be at advantage and you used to do that now you can over here if you can hold shift on dex it makes a dex three ability check at regular wow that was bad or control at disadvantage and alt at advantage the same here everything you can roll these are the shortcuts that are transferred to Foundry, so the integration is really, really tight. And what we can do is we can bite. So we can actually say, I want a bite attack. I want a tail attack. I want to have a freightful presence with the safety of turn on. And this is absolutely enormous because now my streaming module can wait for these roles. He can say, 
the ancient surf dragon, he made a tail attack with advantage, and the result is 36, and Azak is devastated. My pattern can react to those now. And um, you see, there's so many buttons already, legendary reactions are missing, reactions are missing, but in total, uh, it's working really well, and I want to go into that direction. Uh, what I could showcase, but I don't know if it's currently working in this, in this one. Let's go to Roto Pro really quick. Let's try it live. I will hate myself because it won't work. We go to Roto Pro. Uh, we go to campaigns and to the Lost Mines. Roto Pro, where are you, guy? Okay, he's here. And. <laughs> I'm wondering. So, um, my system. Okay, nothing is happening. But uh, because of this two way connection, I will be able to send data from Foundry to DBM2. So, I had the hit points reduced, but admittedly, the Dean Beyond web page is based on React and is totally um, mobile and whatever, auto so many automations, it's really hard to, to change values here. It's easier to get values than to change. So I don't know if that two-way connection is really fruitful and really leading to something, but I will try. Let's see how where we will be ending. What I will implement is enable the role buttons in the character sheet too, as far as I, as, as good as I can, and um, I'm pretty confident that will be great. Um, and now I don't want to talk without having anything more to add. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground today. Um, I've showcased a complete uh, state of the development, and I want to make you hungry for more and I, I want to thank everyone who has been so supportive in terms of providing feedback, in terms of um, pledging on my little Patreon campaign. Thank you very, very much. It's really appreciated. Every single bit helps um, to uh, like make all this seem like useful for other people. And um, so many nice people on the Discord be it on the Foundry VTT Discord or on my own VTT Assets Discord. I, I really appreciate the kindness and the encouraging words and the respect that everyone is acting with each other. I really love that. And that really makes me want to go forward. So thank you very much for the last couple of months, already months. And um, I'm looking forward to 2020 together with you guys. And in this, uh, I'm looking out the window it's a little bit cold, but it's nowhere near where I was when I was a child. So everything is so much worse now. So let's lighten the mood. Uh, it's not really Christmas feeling in my heart, but I hope it's in yours. So for the, I will be uploading this exact uh, version that I showcased right now with all the bugs and with all the improvements that I've made from 1.0 to this version 108 and I will upload that like later and this will be available for download for everyone at least for for the next three days um, I don't know exactly where I'm going regarding my patreon thing um, I love the feedback I love the support actually um, but let's see I want to give something back for the community and I hope everyone has the ability to grab at least that state and to play around with it over the Christmas um, holidays and the year Sylvester, uh, whatever it is called in your place. It's Neujahr with us. Um, it has some time to play with it, to prepare some sessions and provide feedback and thank you for everything. I hope to hear you guys soon and have a great day and Good love for everyone in your... Well, let's stop it here.